Hello, how are you? Welcome to a new video. Today, I am going to be doing some speed reviews on a bunch of new makeup within my collection that I have been testing out over the last month or two. So I feel like I try and incorporate as much new makeup as I can into my videos, but sometimes you see me use something but you don't really hear my final thoughts. So that is exactly what these videos are for, to give you updates on all the products that I have shown in my latest videos. I have done a few of these videos in the past, so I will link them down below if you want to go watch. Otherwise, let's just get straight into this because I have got <laughs> quite a lot. If you are new to my channel, my name is Tanika and I love drugstore makeup, okay? I freaking love it. I don't often buy high-end occasionally, but not that much. So within this bunch today, I have like three things that are more on the high-end scale. The rest is uh, all very affordable. So I want to start out with some brow products. I have two winners and a loser. Starting with my favorite product lately, you've probably heard me raving about it so much, and it is the Emco Beauty Feather Touch Brow Pen. I feel like I've said this spiel a thousand times before, but for those who haven't heard it, I originally tried out the MAC Shape and Shade Brow product. One end was a brush tip applicator, and the other was like a pomade. Now, I loved, loved, loved the brush tip applicator. I was like, oh my god, this is absolutely life-changing. And then Urban Decay released one that had a brush tip and a pencil on one end. Both really great products, but up there in price. So I was looking for something more affordable. Now, Glossier does have an option, but in Australia, you can't get that, so... <laughs> So, I found Emco Beauty at Woolworths, one of the most affordable brands, had a brow pen. Brush tip applicator, I have the lighter shade Blonde, which, to be honest, isn't that light. I've used it in my brows today and they're looking pretty dark. I think because I have my brows tinted though, it does look a bit darker. I feel like when my brows weren't tinted, it wasn't this bad. But oh my god, this brow pen is friggin' life-changing. If you love the look of bushy brows, or you just want your brows to be a bit more, like seriously, just bushy looking, a brow pen is going to do that for you. If you have sparse brows, you would know that when you're drawing in a lot of your brow, it just looks completely fake. So using this brow pen to just lightly draw little strokes makes it look so much better. This brow, look, I'm digging it today. This brow it was just a complete disaster, so let's just not even look at that. But you can see that it's looking very hairy and fluffy, and it comes down to this. So it's just got a nice little brush tip applicator, and what you do is just draw little flicks, just like this. So it is bleeding on my hand because there's lots of lines there, but it doesn't bleed on the brow. It dries pretty quickly and it's really easy to use. So if you wanted to try a brow pen, I would definitely recommend this one. Okay, I feel like these are meant to be speed reviews and I just talked a lot about that. <laughs> Buckle in. Next, I actually found another brow pen and this one is from Rimmel and it's called the Brow Pro Micro. It's the Precision Stroke Pen. And this was when I was on my hunt and I was like, oh my God, like when did Rimmel release this? Why haven't I heard anything about it? I picked this one up in the shade Blonde as well, but this is a felt tip, whereas the Emco is a brush tip and you can majorly tell the difference when you're applying. So here is a close up of what it looks like. I found that the lines it would create were just way too thick. So you're not really getting that hair like stroke because it's so thick. It kind of just fills in your brows and it just didn't give me exactly what I was after. So unfortunately I wouldn't recommend this one. Next is another brow product from Rimmel and this one I really liked. It is the Brow Pro Micro Ultra Fine Precision Pencil. So it's just a micro tip brow pencil and I absolutely love these kinds of brow pencils. So one end you've got that really tiny precision brow pencil and the other end has a spoolie. These are my absolute favorite kind of brow pencils because you can be really precise which is very helpful when you don't have a lot of brow hairs and you need to get all up in there like I do. This is a nice light shade as well. Let me just swatch that for you there. It has quite a cool undertone which I really like on me when it comes to brows 
it's not too deep and the formula is really nice. It's that perfect in between, which is how I feel like I explain brow product products that I really like where that <sighs> stop. What I was trying to say is that perfect formula for me in a brow product is when it falls right in between that like not too waxy, not too creamy. It's the perfect in between where it glides on, but it's not going to move around throughout the day. Next is another product by Emco Beauty, and this is the Extend Lash Mascara. And the reason I wanted to try this one was because it is a tubing mascara. So the product makes a little tube around your lashes, which sounds so cool. So with this mascara, I wasn't in love with it at first. I don't think I'm really in love with it now. It's got a pretty basic wand on it, which I find it doesn't really do much for my lashes. It lengthens them really nicely, but it doesn't give me as much like volume and like that full lash look that I really love. It does stay on really well though, and it comes off really easily, which is probably the most exciting part about a tubing mascara, mascara is that it just glides off. So I don't know, for me, it had some good points, but also some bad points. So I probably wouldn't repurchase it, but look, give it a try, why not? Next, I have these Liquid Glitter Eyeshadows by e.l.f. And oh my god, I freaking love these. The first shade I have is Flirty Birdie. And this is a beautiful bronze with a silver glitter. And it just looks so damn pretty. These are so comparable to the Stila Liquid Glitter Eyeshadows. Like, I was shook, okay? I'll just swatch this one here for you. They are super pigmented. I think my memory card is about to run out. So as I was saying, they are super pigmented and they give such a beautiful shimmer. Like look how glittery they are. Well, that is not they. Let me swatch the other one for you. I was a little nervous that they might be like dry and like crack on the lids but they absolutely do not. I did a look with this khaki green shade recently and oh, it was just beautiful. They are blendable on the lids, really easy to work with. And like I said, just give that really nice glitter, punch of, of glitter. <laughs> So pretty, they're only $10 each. You can get them at Kmart or on the e.l.f. website. Would 100% recommend. While we're on the eyeshadow category, I actually have two here from Maybelline. This is the Color Tattoo On End Bronze 24 Hour Eyeshadow. It's a cream eyeshadow. So I know these used to be really big back in the day and I'm not sure if they like just reformulated them or redid the packaging. But I was after an eyeshadow that I could just wear every day. I wanted something more on the cooler side that had a bit of a shimmer in it that I could just easily whack on the lids and go. And this is bloody perfect. I was inspired by Jessica Braun because I feel like she does this a lot. I'm pretty sure she has a Charlotte Tilbury um, cream eyeshadow that she uses all the time. And she just puts one color on her lid and it looks freaking amazing. So this is the shade here. As you can see, it is a little deep, but once you blend it out, it just leaves such a beautiful shade on the lid. I've been wearing it to work daily. I really love it. It's easy to use and that's all there is to say about it. It's a good product. And then I also picked up this Color Strike Cream to Powder Shadow Pen by Maybelline. And I thought this could be another option for the whole daily one shadow look thing I was going for. But when I end up swatching this when I got home, it's very, very glittery, which is so beautiful, but not really for every day. So anyway, you untwist it and it's got a little shadow like puff applicator. And let me just swatch it for you. So it's still that nice, cool, brown, kind of bronzy, shimmery shade, but it just has a bit more glitter in it, which I feel like it's not really coming up. I can see it on my hand. I hope you could see that in the camera, but it's got a bit more of a silver glitter in it. And I wore it, we went out to dinner recently for Clinton's birthday, and I wore it just all over my lid, blended it out, one shade. <gasps> oh my God. 
God, it was so pretty. And when the light shone, shone? When the light hit the glitter, oh my God. Before we left, I was just in the mirror going like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it was so pretty. I know that that product does come in quite a variety of colors. There's like a nudey kind of nice gold shade I really want to try. So I'll definitely pick that up next time there is a sale on them because it's just, again, a good product. Next, I'm going to talk about the Sigma airbrushes. <gasps> oh my goodness, I have not put these down, especially the F53 Contour Blush Brush. Oh my goodness. So these are a duo fiber brush. They are super lightweight and perfect for blending out liquid and cream products. So first up, I have the F80 Kabuki. Now, I need to talk about this for a minute because as you would all know, I love using a good old Kabuki brush. These two here by Sigma, I love for blending out my foundation. As you can see, they are very, very dense brushes. So there are a lot of hairs compacted into these brushes. And when I blend out my foundation, I like to stipple. So I tap up and down to blend. I don't buff it into my skin. But with this brush, because the bristles are much more lighter, it is perfect for buffing foundation into the skin. And I feel like there was a little bit of confusion in my last video. I said I don't like buffing foundation because it can irritate my skin. And a subscriber brought up the point, well, you just buffed your primers into your skin. I was like, oh yeah. But the difference was the brush I used for my primers was also a duo fiber brush. So it's a lot lighter on the skin as opposed to a dense kabuki brush. So if you ever see me buffing my foundation into my skin from now on, it'll definitely be with this Sigma F80 Air Kabuki because it is so much lighter and it doesn't grab onto any breakouts or flakiness, which I feel like a more dense kabuki brush does and it that's how it irritates my skin it picks up on the flaky skin and it's just not nice whereas this kind of just glides over it i know it seems so silly like they're just brushes but there is a major major difference between these two but anyway i have really been enjoying the f80 air kabuki brush it leaves a really beautiful medium finish with foundations which i've actually really been digging lately so I hope that all made sense and I explained myself. <laughs> but anyway, the other two brushes in the collection are the Domed Buffer. And as you can see, I have been using this for my cream bronzer, the Fenty bronzer. I used it today. This brush just fits so perfectly in the contours of your face. As you can see, it's domed. So I like to start with that side and place the product in the hollows and then use the side so that it's flat to blend it out. It just does a beautiful job. You could also use this for blush if you wanted to, but I have been using the contour slash blush brush. This is where the magic has been happening. Oh my goodness. So I used previously this one here, the Kmart buffing brush. As you can see, very dense but it did a good job of blending in my cream blushes. I always enjoyed it. There were a few that I thought looked a little patchy, but I just thought it was the product. So what I did is I tried those products that I thought were patchy because of the formula with the Sigma brush and it just changed everything. This brush is designed for cream and liquid products and it just blended in the liquid blushes to perfection. It applies the product very lightly, it blends easily just with small padding motions like this. Look, if you need a brush for liquid bronzer or blush, I would definitely recommend picking this one up because it has been an absolute life saver for me. I freaking love it. Okay, I still have a few items left, so keep hanging in there. I have the Models Prefer Natural Glow Bronzer and this is in the shade Sunlit. I picked this up on a whim. I hadn't read any reviews. I just saw it was new in store and decided to try it. And look, I really enjoy this bronzer. It's a very cool tone, so it does contour as well on my fair skin. 
It looks like it has a bit of glitter in it, but on the skin, it just leaves a really nice sheen. Would definitely recommend this bronzer. It blends out beautifully and it's just the perfect shade if you've got super, super fair skin like me because it's not too warm and orange. And then also from that range is the Luminous Luxe Highlighter and this is in the shade Halo. Now this look, I thought it would be a really good shade for fair skin and it is, but it's rather glittery. So it's a bit too much for what I'm into at the moment. It does feel a little dry when you swatch it on your finger, but I'll just swatch it on my hand and show you what it looks like. It does leave a nice glow, but there are chunks of glitter in it that I just don't really like. I just think it can look a little powdery on the skin, so it's not my favorite highlighter. A highlighter from the drugstore that I've really been loving though is this Savvy Mineral Baked Highlighter in the shade Pure Pearl. Now again, a nice fair shade and this, oh my goodness, let me blend that out on my hand for you. Look at that sheen. Oh my goodness. So it's not too metallic or glittery. It just leaves that beautiful sheen on the skin, which is what I have been after. It's not powdery like the models prefer one either. So it sits really nicely on the skin without looking dry. It's only a few dollars as well. So this is a real good find. For price line. Another product by Savvy that I have been really enjoying is the Cheek Duo in Rose and Shine. So this comes with a cream highlighter and a cream blush. The highlighter, I love it. It's a beautiful shade for my fair skin and it does give that wet look because it is a cream product. So here it is swatched here. I know it's a bit hard to see these highlighter shades on my fair skin, but I've got it on today. It leaves such a beautiful glow. I've really been into cream highlighters lately and this one is a winner for me and I find it's quite long lasting on the skin. Same with the blush. I have loved my single cheek and lip color from Savvy for so long now and this is exactly the same. The shade is a little brighter, like more of a bright pink than the other one that I use, but it's still quite muted, so I really like it. It's a beautiful shade, very pigmented though, so go in with a light hand and just build it up. But if you're using the Sigma F53 airbrush, you're gonna get a beautiful application anyway. Another highlighter and blush combo that I picked up is the Mecca Cosmetica Hydra Cheek Tint and Illuminating Balm Duo. So this is in the shade Weekend Skin Blossom. And one side, you've got your blush, which is quite a bright pink. Again, very pigmented, so go in with a light hand. But what I like about this blush is it's more of that balm product rather than a cream. There's just something different about the way it sits on the skin. And then the other side twists off and it is a highlighter. This again also being that balm formula just leaves a really nice wet glossy look. It is so beautiful on the skin. I'm pretty sure this product was around $40. Beautiful, beautiful packaging and the difference between this and the Savvy, you know, they're both cream products, but the Mecca, as I said, it's that balm. So there's something a little more glossy about it, but they are both great products. I would recommend both of them. It's just depending on your budget, which one you'd prefer to pick up. Next, I have the Patrick Ta Clear Shaping Wax and... <sighs> To be honest, I don't know why I splurged on this. It's literally just soap brows. Like I could use a bar of soap and get the same result. I just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was weird. Beautiful, beautiful packaging. It lives up to its high end standards, but seriously, it's just a clear brow wax. You wet it with some kind of setting spray and brush it through your brows. And then I use the back of the spoolie and just flatten the hairs down. So it does give me the bushy, you know, lots of brow hair look that I'm going for, but I probably could have done the same thing with soap and yeah, I don't know why I splurged. <laughs> and lastly, that's right, you heard me correct. Lastly, I have the Maybelline Glass Spray. Now when I first used this, I had some problems with the mister. It was coming out in like one straight line, which 
no thank you. So I end up taking the lid off and anyway, getting it to work. But look, the product inside is nice. It leaves a beautiful, dewy, glowy look to the skin. Like if you want dewy, this is going to do that. But the mister is just still so, mm, like it's aggressive. Let me move my laptop and I'll spray it. Like, like see how it's just, you know what I mean? Aggressive. Whereas this L'Oreal Shake and Glow, which I love. See that? It's soft. It's gentle. Like, I feel like it's just hissing at my face. And it's a real shame because, as I said, I really like the product in the bottle. But trying to get it on your face and, like, I'm covering my eye because I just want it on my cheeks. But then I feel like it just... I don't know, I don't like the way it deposits the product. So look, if I get a spare, like if I use up all of this, I'll probably tip that product into a spare one of these. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, that is everything. If you made it to the end of this video, like, wow. Thank you so much and congratulations. Leave me an emoji down below of the blue butterfly so I know that you made it all the way to the end. <laughs> if you've tried out any of these products, make sure you leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts because I would love to have a little conversation about it. I feel like there are some really good drugstore winners amongst this little collection and it just makes me so excited because I love buying affordable, amazing makeup. All right, well, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. You can also come follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. Otherwise, I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.